Okay, so we are now working on our Newton's Laws foldable. Um, let me say this about Newton's Laws. Um, I think you need to teach um, speed, velocity, and acceleration first so they understand what you're talking about. Otherwise, you will be teaching speed, velocity, and acceleration as you are teaching Newton's Laws. Um, the other thing I want to say about Newton's Laws are that kids know Newton's Laws. They've experienced them. They they live them on a day-to-day -day basis. But as a concept, it's kind of challenging to teach. So you've got to get creative and you've got to get um, very tactile and very kinesthetic and you got to get up and do. You've got to show and demonstrate Newton's laws for them. All that said, um, they do need to actually know Newton's laws. They need to have them um, memorized per se. So, um, we only have nine pieces to cut out. We're going to do exactly the same thing that we did in the um, force in motion, the speed, velocity, acceleration foldable. We're just going to fold over and make a nice little lip. Now, it is completely dependent on you. If you want the picture on the outside, um, you can glue the picture on the outside. If you want the definition, or the law on the outside, you can do that as well. I think that for this, we're going to go ahead and do the picture on the outside so that they know um, they have something to kind of remember this by. Now, um, one of my favorite places to go is um, Physics for Kids. And the reason being is that the language is um, so much more simple and I tell my students I'll go to physics for kids I'll go to chemistry for kids um, when you're typing in a search engine type that in because um, sometimes I need it explained to me um, in a more simplistic way and I know Wikipedia has I think it's wiki simple or wiki simplified something like that but it will put a very difficult concept Wikipedia has done this they will put a very difficult concept um, in common language and so as an eighth grade science teacher I don't have a background in physics um, but I do have to teach these kind of elementary concepts of physics so I will utilize any resource any physics or science resource for kids um, so that I can explain it, so that it's simplified for me, and I can utilize those as literacy tools. So, um, physics for kids, chemistry for kids, um, great websites that you can use to um, find a literacy piece and explain something in um, a more simplistic or more elementary way. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces ready to go, and all we need to do is glue them down. So we've got it kind of simplified. And if you wanted to, on the back of this, you could um, do a timeline of Newton's discoveries. Um, you maybe could have the students write um, the importance of Newton's discoveries, um, maybe a biography if you wanted to do, just incorporate a writing component or a literacy, a literacy component into this. You could do something like that where they have to research Newton um, and his contributions because up until Einstein he was um, the most important man in science um, I guess I shouldn't say that I'm sure there are many if there if there's anybody watching this who's like not you know a, uh, a public school teacher they're probably like rolling their eyes but it's just kind of a matter of opinion I guess but um, at least when you get into cosmology and stuff, you realize that uh, Einstein kind of turned everything around in terms of physics. So, um, glue down the first law here. Now, all of this is totally up to you how you want to do this. Like I said, you could do the definition on the front and you could do a picture on the back. Um, you may find something, you may find, um, like you may do a lab in your class and you may be able to take a picture of that lab that demonstrates um, 
force um, equals mass times acceleration, and you could utilize that picture. I would utilize anything that you have taught and that is relevant and fresh in their brains. Just throwing out any kind of graphic isn't necessarily the best thing. So keep that in mind, but just as a starting point and just for demonstration's sake, that's, you know, this is what we're using. But um, yeah, you could do all kinds of things. I mean, you could have some kids take some pictures and if they were willing, you know, you could have have them take their own picture and bring it to class and glue it down, you know. We could, you, you could have a, you know, a, a larger student, like a, a, a really tall male student versus a really tiny little girl, you know, and somebody trying to push them or something like that. I mean, you could do all kinds of things within the reason of safety. So always safety, safety. So I'm going to turn this upside down for a second, try to kind of guesstimate here evenly. The reason um, I selected the rocket um, was because that is typically the example we find in the third law and they'll, they'll give us a rocket. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it up top here. Um, so I, I picked that and we have um, some questions in our in our um, unit assessments about rockets. So that's why I picked that one. However, um, I am sure that there are some of you who are more well versed that can come up with a better um, image or graphic for um, the third law of motion, you know, equal and opposite. So, um, and, I, and then something that I think is relevant um, is, you know, the, the idea that forces are found in pairs. So we, we need to keep that in mind and we need to make sure students understand that, that there are always two forces going on in uh, acting on an object at any given time. And so now we have our last little law here. And um, like I said, you can have the kiddos you can have them draw pictures. You can have them create their own definition um, for a critical writing piece or any anything like that, as long as you check it. Don't let them just make something up. Make sure it's correct and accurate. You could have them work in pairs or, or groups, um, a cooperative learning group to come up with a definition and then the class could, you know, as a whole vote on, okay, yeah, that's the best definition that makes the most sense. You can do a variety of things um, and then, you know, import into the document that um, you will be able to find at teachingdiva.com. So um, all of that said, you know, don't just assume that it has to go like this. You can make this your own. This is solely for example sake. So now we have our Newton's Laws uh, foldable. So I hope you guys found that useful. Remember handouts can be found at teachingdiva.com and I will see you guys next time.